my lovely, lovely imps, I have been sent a gift. As many of you know, I love Dark Souls. I love FromSoft. I love Elden Ring. I love Bloodborne. I love Sekiro. I love Armored Core. I am a FromSoft super fan. I adore these games, okay? I'm stating my bias up front. Um, I don't believe that they're, that these games are above reproach at all, um, but I've found in recent memory that when people try to criticize FromSoft games, I, I find a lot of people who do a really bad job at it, and it's annoying to me. It's annoying to me, uh, and I feel the need to take up my ultra great sword and, uh, uh, you know, uh, ultra great shield and my Havel armor um, with infinite poise and defend one of the most successful, okay, now I sound, now I'm just sounding super white, whatever, fuck it. I'm gonna defend one of the most successful series uh, uh, in the world from bad critiques. Um, I'm sorry, uh, I, 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 it annoys the hell out of me, okay? It really annoys me when uh, people do bad critiques. Like, Jesus Christ, it makes me angry, okay? And, um, <laughs> I just get annoyed, okay? And the thing is, I have seen good critiques of FromSoft games. I have, uh, I have definitely enjoyed and imbibed a few excellent critiques of FromSoft games. And in fact, I've issued a few of my own. Um, but there's some things that make me feel annoyed. And I have been given a gift, which is that I have been told that the YouTuber, the right-wing uh, sword-fighting turned culture critic channel Shadowversity has done a big raging gamer review of Elden Ring. And I want to watch it because I could be wrong, but I have a feeling that what I'm kind of talking about here might be apparent in this video. Just because I'm fairly familiar with Shadowversary's of, of Shadowversary, <laughs> Shadowversity's other uh, other work. Okay. Oh man. Uh, I, anyway, I want to watch this together, and I want to critique the critique. Uh, I want to be, it's my turn. Instead of being a rager and critiquing things, I am going to defend something. So let's do it. Let's react to Shadowversity's what pisses me off about Elden Ring story and world building, which as you can see has this uh, very curious thumbnail going on here of, um, he seems to be having conniptions. Let's see. Let's do it. Let's fuck do it. Whoa! That is loud. Whoa! Let's do it. Shadowverse. All I'm saying is, if you're gonna... Listen. All I'm saying is... If you're gonna swing at the greats, if you're gonna if you're gonna be swinging at the gods, you better come swinging with a better fucking uh, intro than this, okay? I'm really sorry. Shadowverse. Elden Ring, Elden Ring has such terrible graphics, and the music is just dumb. How is it so? How is the game so bad? Okay, and then your intro is like a fucking Fiverr animation of a sword. Okay, all right. All right, all right, I'm done being mean. I, I don't want to poison the well. All right, let's do this, let's do this. Come on, that's a low blow. I'm doing, I'm, 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 I'm committing my own sins here. All right, let's go, let's go. Greetings, I'm Shad, and Elden Ring's world building is absolutely phenomenal, but what really annoys me about that is that I didn't learn how good it was from the game. And to me, that's a big problem. Now... What? How? 
I understand that um, the way from soft the developers are Elden Ring, uh, the way that they do story is very uh, undertoned, mysterious, not in your face, and uh, you have to do digging. There's a joke in the uh, Dark Souls community that Oz um, uh, told me about. Say hi, Oz. Hello. That you have to wait for a, vi a video from Vati Vidya uh, to understand the world building and what's interesting. Vati Vidya, what about Smoth Town? What about Smoth Town? Huh? What about my boy fucking Zeo Storm? How come Vadi is the only one who ever gets any credit for this shit? That was one of Vadi Vidya's videos that we understand the world we'll be ordering. So much to the point, <clears throat> and I'm really annoyed. Now, you, for people who love the way FromSoft does their storytelling, uh, I have experience with writing, I have experience with world building, okay, I do this as a, um, a career, I'm an author, and uh, I've studied it a lot, and my own opinion, but it is also an informed one from a lot of- Why is he out of focus? It, I'm sorry, this is a small nitpick, but this katana in the background is in perfect focus, and he's way out of focus. Why? He's in a static shot. Why? I would get it if he was like moving around a bunch or something. But what the fuck? The study, right, is that- It's not even a little, he's like way out of focus. They are shooting themselves in the foot a bit and that they could achieve the same thing that they're offering the people who like their style in terms of mystery and stuff like that. They could still achieve that and not leave so many people in the lurch, myself included, in just not understanding what's going on. There are some fundamental elements in the story and world building in this world that I feel is actually essential. Uh, now, and when I say essential, I'm gonna clarify that so you understand. Essential for the player, uh, the audience, to understand enough of what's going on to be invested to see what the results will be. To me, that's what I feel is essential world building. I think Elden Ring should have started with um, a big, a big dramatic intro and they go, in the beginning, the lands betwixt were created and you are a warrior and you've come to put things in the correct order. Will you be good and select the good ending? which is this one, or will you be bad and select a bad ending, which is this one? Uh, or storytelling, enough to invest the audience, the reader, to want to know the conclusion. Now, why do I feel Elden Ring doesn't do that? Because I understood very little going into the game. There was an Elden Ring Ring didn't do a good job because I personally didn't get it. Okay, let me talk about something that is that people don't understand about the Dark Souls games, okay? Um, and, not, and that includes, I'm gonna include Elden Ring as a Dark Souls game, as a Souls type game by FromSoft, okay? And this is something that um, if you go and play souls alikes, you will find that basically no other gaming company is able to reproduce the mood and storytelling style of FromSoft games. And it's one of the things that's lacking most in a lot of FromSoft, uh, you know, souls, uh, FromSoft imitator souls-like games um, is the fact that um, they don't actually know what's going on. One of the things that is most special about uh, uh, FromSoft games is not that you need to be told what is happening in the story, but rather that the story is a process of discovery. Um, that you are not almost ever told exactly what is. And usually when you are told something, 
in game directly, it is from the perspective of a very unreliable narrator. For example, uh, when you speak with the Dark Serpent, uh, King Seeker Frampt, and he tells you that, oh yeah, you're 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 supposed to be the you're the heir. You're gonna be the next god of the sunlight, basically. We just need you to do this thing. You're being manipulated actively as a part of the story. Um, in the the games, uh, the FromSoft in you know library of all the souls and souls like games in their library are games where the story is told um indirectly through what you see what you experience what you find in the world and here's another important part the conversations you have with other people because all of these games are designed to encourage you um, to connect with other players of the games, whether it's directly through the messages that are put down in the world, whether it's uh, and the multiplayer and things like that, or indirectly through going online and engaging in a sort of video game archaeology where people come together and discuss and argue uh, about different interpretations of pieces of the lore. Discovery, including that second portion, that part of uh, engaging in a discourse with other people is so integral to these games and it's not just mystery that bo saying the games are mysterious boils it down in a way that makes you completely miss the point the story is designed at all points to encourage you to seek out other people not just to be told what to think but to hear what they have to say and therefore enhance your own understanding of things um you get little pieces of lore that you have to put together and then you might put to like think of it like this um like i said i use the word uh like video game archaeology for a reason um Imagine that you uh, discover some bones in your backyard and you spend a bunch of time looking at the bones and assembling them all together. Uh, and you go and you take your little, the bones you found and you say, this is what I found in my backyard and I tried to put it back together. Uh, and what you end up with is, uh, you know, a, a, a potential reading of how those bones connected. And you take it to somebody else and they go, wait a second, I think you've misconnected this bone here. And you, and then that person twit, twit, changes it. And the next person that comes together and you're all working on these bones together until you're able to assemble back what was there. And then you realize, oh my goodness, we had mixed up two bones of two different beings. And there were actually two beings in the backyard because a third person comes in and points out something that you missed. It's just like that. That is how the stories of these games are designed to be experienced, not not just to be told by somebody else. And um, and honestly, um, this is uh, there like oh my god, there's so many aspects of the Bloodborne is an example of a community where the the consensus on the lore has shifted over the years as various. Uh, game historians have given their takes. There are multiple uh, uh, highly respected essays and pieces that have been written about aspects of Bloodborne lore that have changed people's interpretation over time. And there were actually eras of the internet where you can see where a certain theory on the lore had popularity and was changed by somebody else coming in and giving their bit. Um, and the thing that's so genius about this I know I'm like kind of going off on a big rant, but I felt like um, I felt like I want to address this right away. Um, the thing that's so genius about this is that it ties in with the rest of the themes of the game. Um, in Dark Souls One, you're you are a uh, a single cursed undead. Uh, uh, and, and you have arrived in the, the land of Lordran, where time itself has been interrupted, and uh, timelines are all tangled upon each other, and you drift in and out, and you are, are, uh, are encouraged to, uh, to uh, uh, make connections and discoveries 
uh, and also enmity and conflicts with not just other players, but the even the NPCs. You meet Solaire, who you can summon to help you. Solaire openly tells you, time here flows strangely. I don't even know how long our, ver our perceptions of the world are going to overlap. In 10 minutes, I might be gone and you might be somewhere else because time has, has disrupted itself. And yet you are encouraged by the game to work together with these strange passerbys. And if you want to go a little even deeper, uh, Miyazaki in, I don't have the article on hand, but in an interview um, uh, about the Dark Souls games and specifically about the multiplayer of Dark Souls was asked where his inspiration came from. And the story that he told was uh, that there was a particularly snowy day and he was sitting inside his apartment and looking outside and people kept getting stuck their cars kept getting stuck in the slush and snow on the hill outside of his apartment. And throughout the day, various unrelated people were just off the cuff helping each other get their car un unstuck. People who didn't necessarily know each other, but who were in a shared predicament. And they uh, went and helped each other unstick their cars and they might never speak again. But in that moment, they, their, their lives, the, the, their, their, the, the lines of their lives overlapped in order to accomplish an end, to overcome a difficulty. And that was where he said, you know, a piece of his inspiration for the, for the, game, the multiplayer gameplay of Dark Souls comes from. And it's pretty wild that that is an intrinsic part of the story, that there are NPCs in the story where you have this sort of collaborative and mutual experience of discovery and overcoming hardship um, or overcoming uh, adversity and obstacles. And that also carries through to how people discover the lore, that the lore has to be this, um, this process of working together and sometimes arguing with each other and taking bits and pieces and assembling it in this process of discovery. Now that was a big rant, so I hope I haven't lost everyone's attention. Um, I hope that actually I made it compelling, but I figured it was necessary for me to present this uh, since the first two minutes of this video have basically, um, in my opinion, completely mischaracterized what makes the world design and lore of the FromSoft game so special. <laughs> Felson Informa says, ah, Demon Mama, none of this dismisses the core of Shad's argument. He's an experienced writer. Oh, come on. <laughs> Isn't Elden Ring the most explicit narrative too? Um, no, that would be Sekiro. Uh, Sekiro has the most straightforward uh, narrative and even Sekiro still has a lot of these aspects. Anyway, let's uh, continue, let's continue. I wanna hear more. Golden Ring, it was, a sh it was shattered, I needed to find it. I didn't know, know why, I didn't really know what, it was causing all these bad things, okay? The world has gone to crap. How? And the how isn't that difficult to explain. In fact, I want to explain it to you, and also, by doing it, show you how awesome and incredible this world building is, and explain why I think it's so great. And in doing that, I would also be providing with people who don't understand the lore or the story, the thing that was lacking for me, the essential story or enough of the story that you need to know to be invested to want to know how it concludes. If you do not have that in a story, whether it's video game, novels, or anything, the reader will just turn off. That's why it's essential. <laughs> if you okay, but this argument fails on its face as Elden Ring is the most popular uh, and most played of, of, of any of the FromSoft library. More people picked up Elden Ring and more people pick, completed Elden Ring than anybody else. So the idea that the Elden Ring story has failed to, to like reach people uh, is just like it's it's numerically false It's it's the most it's proven to be incredibly accessible In fact it was Elden Ring was that was sort of a giant flex from FromSoft saying guess what? We don't have to be considered a niche studio anymore because we believe that even the average gamer can appreciate what we do It was a giant flex 
So I, I don't think that this argument that, that he's sort of appealing to people he what he's he's projecting onto other people what he personally felt. He's saying, "Oh well, other people and myself uh, definitely didn't feel invested in the story." When everything we can see shows that actually people quite like the story and that there's still community hunger for it, just like all of the other FromSoft games. You want a story that actually causes people to want to finish it, and they did. And they did, and the fact that it, uh, Okay, let's continue. You need that. That's the essential, at least the bare minimum. You can go further than that, and I think even perhaps FromSoft could do this as well. They could go further, because there is so much incredible story and lore in this world. And the ways they have implemented, right, there's a difference between telling the story but and implementing it, okay? They tell very little in the story, but it is implemented in nearly everything in this game. And what annoys me is because you know so little of the story, you barely pick up on how it's implemented because you can't see the connections. But when you know those connections, you, you pick it up in the from the items to every single boss, every single creature, every single... It's everywhere! The world builds! I just don't understand what he's saying with this particular point. Oh man, if I keep pausing at this rate, we're never going to finish this video, which means we won't get to play Dark Souls. So we're going to definitely have to, uh, I'm going to have to let him just go on some of these because um, I don't know how you can say I you can't see the connections if you also say, wait, all of this context is provided in items and you go and seek them out and those items demonstrate their own connections. Whatever, let's go. Building ...is oozing out of every facet of this game, and what friggin' annoys me is that I missed all of it because I didn't know enough to even notice it! Yeah, it's that old... It's the old <laughs> okay, uh, I really feel like four minutes into this video, the Angry Joe, uh, Nostalgia Critic, Gamer Rage shit doesn't sell well. And look, I'm not completely opposed to rage reviews, okay? I've done one, some of you will know. I mean, to be fair, I was being egged off on by my live chat. Uh, I did my rage review of the Baltius boss fight in Armored Core 6, uh, I, but I think that, uh, I don't think that it's helping his case here, being really mad four minutes in about something that he hasn't articulated particularly well. Story, uh, how's it go? Um, show, don't tell, but the Japanese have show, don't tell. Actually, you have to be a detective to figure this crap out. Yeah, yeah, no, this isn't. This is uh, how's it go? Um, show, don't tell, but the Japanese have show, don't tell. Actually, you have to be a detective to figure this crap out. Yeah. Dude, w what? Was that supposed to be funny? Yeah, yeah, no, this isn't, this isn't showing, it's not telling, it's hiding. Now, some people like the uh, detective mystery reading every single description of every single spell and item to find the connections. This is what Vadi Vidya does and things. No, okay. Again, I'm going to reiterate this. Um, video games are simulations of all kinds of things. Simulated worlds, simulated experiences, and one of the things that the Dark Souls story does is simulate discovery. It entices curiosity. They're not obscuring anything. There is an, there is an intentionality in certain levels of obscuring, but they're not obscuring it for, for to, be obs to, to obscure it for its own case, for its own sake. It's like, um, okay, it's like uh, if, if you went to a, uh, if you went to an escape room, to an escape room event and you went into the escape room and you were mad that that in the escape room experience that an item had been hidden somewhere and you're like whoa the item has been intentionally obscured from me it's like yeah 
to a certain degree, you're not wrong that the that the creators of this space obscured that item, but they're not like obscuring it for the sake of obscuring it. It's to create a simulation of escaping the room. And in a Dark Souls game or in an Elden Ring game, the 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 items are placed and the pieces of information are distributed uh, in such a way that it inspires discovery and investigation. You're not the the instinct is not I am going to go immediately have someone tell me all of this shit. The goal is that it's supposed to inspire you to try and come to your own conclusions and then to seek out other interpretations that may change your own conclusions. It is to simulate that experience of discovery. I don't like doing that, okay? I want to be immersed in a story. I don't want to have to freaking read pages of text to- Then go play a different game. Then just go play a different game. Connect dots and all that stuff. And for the people who do like that, I really feel that the game could still have that element and also provide the essential story and world building you need for most players to be invested to want to know how it concludes. Okay, but it does. In fact, there is a there is a completely valid path through Elden Ring that involves you literally following golden lines to go wherever you are told to go. And if you follow those golden lines, you will receive a complete and structured narrative from beginning to end. The guidance of grace literally tells you where to go. It's actually, interestingly, a part of the game's sort of self-aware commentary. It's funny that he should even say this at all because in, and this isn't true, this criticism would be more true, not still, not, not true, but more true if it were made about a game like Dark Souls or even Dark Souls 3, where the game doesn't explicitly tell you where to go. But in Elden Ring, there is a valid path to the end of the game that literally involves po following arrows on your map. It just means that you might be being misled and not get a super cool and interesting ending because you're just doing the will of a higher power. Anyway, let's continue. Because that's the, the build up. Just, for instance, what is the Elden Ring? You, you could kind of piece it together, but it's not clear. But what they really don't share in the game, and this is where I was completely lost, is how the Elden Ring um, affected the world so much and what caused the world to be the way it's in. I think that's really important, and it's not going to take too much time to explain, and that means it wouldn't have taken too much time for someone cutscene, the character creation, what caused your character to become a tarnish and all those things wouldn't have taken long to have that to, for us at least to get that amount, but they could have done even more. And so huh? that's just the beginning part of what made the world its way, but there's still so much. Oh yeah, I gotta put on the subtitles. Much mystery. You learn about Queen Marika the Immortal, all right? But there's a heap of mystery of what happened to her uh, to get the world into, so you could have all that mystery and still at least explain what the great runes are, what the Elden Ring is, how it relates to the world, and how the rune of death, for instance, by being broken, pulled out, like the Elden Ring is shattered, but first it was broken and that rune was removed, how it may play it, and that creates undeath and also the tarnish, all these things, okay? That's essential stuff. It really is if you want to know what's going on, but then all the mystery can still happen. Like, you, you hear about, um, Man, there's Godfrey, Godwin, and Godric. Uh, which is the first one that got murdered by the Black Knives? Yeah, there's Godfrey, Godwin, and Godric. Then mm. there's uh, Rani, Radan, and uh, Ryken. <laughs> true, is actually. This part is true. very confusing. And then there's three others that all share the same suffix. <laughs> I know, I'm like, come on. But there's one of the God guys, Godric or something, that got murdered, right? And he didn't get murdered. He, di he didn't die. So. Well, uh, well I've gone, I've gone down the law building rabbit hole and there's some interesting things of what got killed, what didn't get killed. But anyway, the, the Knights of the Black Knives, I think it was. For instance, th there's great mystery on as to who the Black Knife assassins were, where they come from, why they killed Godric or who, which, the first god guy, right? Because uh, then there's Godwin and g g the other one. <laughs> um, so you can have all that mystery, which means the people who love that side of 
from soft's uh, storytelling way right get what they want but also all <laughs> i can tell you okay we're 10 minutes into this and i was correct to pause this video at two minutes and explain um the the fundamental misunderstanding going on here because this entire video is built off of misunderstanding what from software is doing he just does not understand he he says the way that FromSoft does it, but he doesn't actually know what it is. He 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 has identified that FromSoft has a style, but he doesn't know how to articulate what that style is because he doesn't understand the style. He just knows that a style exists. And that is like so far everything that is that everything that he's said has been built off of that fundamental misunderstanding that he doesn't know how they tell their stories in the first place. So many people and players. By the way, just to throw back to the beginning of my video, this is why I'm putting on my Havel's armor, ultra great sword, and tower shield to defend FromSoft. Because I can't stand it when people do bad critique like this. It genuinely pisses me off. It's bad. Critique the games, please. But, but if you're gonna swing at the gods, do so well, please like me, wouldn't have been left in lurch. And this is the biggest reason why I think it's a- Chainsaw says, just say you don't like reading, bro. That's the funny thing. FromSoft, here's the thing that's crazy about all of this. FromSoft games don't even require that much reading. The, what they require is piecing things together. They require thinking. That's the thing. He doesn't like thinking. That's why his answer was, you need to go immediately watch a Vati Vidya video. By the way, I love Vati Vidya, don't get me wrong, but Vati Vidya is only presents his own theories and he's been wrong about theories in the past because Vati Vidya can only give you his read of the world. It's not an objectively correct one and he's often been incorrect. And that's why, by the way, as a as a deep, 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 deep FromSoft and Dark Souls enjoyer, I like to watch multiple channels takes on various things, their own theories, and then I make my own. My I compare them again, not even then, I usually have my own that becomes changed as I engage with other people's theories on it. These th these games don't even require a lot of reading. There is there is no area of Dark Souls ever where you pick up a book like in say like Skyrim and there's just six pages of lore or like Baldur's Gate 3 where there's all these books that actually have pages of reading. The most of any single lore tidbit will be in an item description. So there's not even that much reading to be done. What there is is thinking, comparing, and assembling and he doesn't like that process he's angry about the process which look if you don't like it that's one thing but just say you don't like it you're not doing some sort of objective art critique by saying that they're doing something wrong or that they're not doing something correctly on the most popular from soft game ever made just because you don't like the process of finding tidbits in the world thinking about them in their context one of the biggest parts of lore analysis, if you get into Dark Souls lore, lore analysis, is not even reading item descriptions. It's thinking about where items are placed in the world because the context that an item or a character or a uh, an event occurs in is very important to the way that From Software tells stories. The context is important. Uh, here's an example. Perfect example. Last time we were playing Dark Souls together on stream, we were running through An Orlando, and remember we found that secret basement where we found Havel's armor, and in in one of the chests, um, alongside Havel's armor, is a cursed occult club, a club that curse is uh uh is does that that type of item occult does bonus damage to divine beings. So you go, why? And it was hidden inside a mimic, uh, a, a chest that is designed to kill anyone who opens it without knowing that it's a mimic. So why would Havel have a, a god-killing club hidden in a mimic that's designed to kill people? Could it be, perhaps, that because of the environmental context of where that item was located, that we can come to some theories about the motivations of Havel? Maybe Havel 
was turning against the gods. Maybe he had vengeance he wanted to take out against a god that he didn't want people to discover. So he hid his most treasured items in the basement and the item that was proof of his treachery was hidden in a chest that would eat you if you tried to open it. <gasps> No reading required. Technically, you would need to read at some point in order to know that occult items are designed to kill the gods. But other than that, this is storytelling that is told by context. It is storytelling that requires you to think and come to your own conclusions. And that's what he's getting, seems to be getting mad at here. Important, right? I almost stopped playing Elden Ring because uh, I got immersed in the uh, uh, gameplay. Really, I was having fun, but then I, I got that taste. That was fun. I decided, okay, maybe what I'll invest my enjoyment in the game is I'll try a different build. So I made a new character, Magic. <clears throat> Got her quickly to like level 30 or something using all the, the fun little farming spots and everything. Got some of the cool spells, got the wave, shockwave thing, went to one of the first areas. Clear, like, so I did all that and then I was like, oh, that was, that was fun. Now I'm done with magic already. Uh, I know I could get the big Kamehameha thing, but <clears throat> I know how that would go. And I was like, oh, wow. I've had this feeling with a lot of games. I'm already done with Elden Ring. Like I've immersed myself in enough of the gameplay that I, I know, I've enjoyed it, but now there's nothing holding me in, in Elden Ring. And so I was ready to stop. But out okay. of curiosity, because there was so much I did. Oh, out of curio. Oh, he's, he's, oh, is he going to awaken? Curiosity, you say? You were curious about something? And it made you look deeper into the world? Oh! Didn't know what's going on. I was like, I'll check out a lore video. The thing is, when I checked out that lore video, it was one of Vardy videos, it was so damn good, the world building, and I want to explain why it's good, I'm gonna get there, was awesome that it pulled me back into the game where I had to know I wanted to, one, interact with these characters that I learned about in the world building, so I want to find them, and if I fight them or if I injure I want to see what happens in their story, and I want to know what the result will be, what the end will be, and so... Oh my god, it's almost like this world encourages you to try and understand the things that you don't understand, and if you engage with the game on its own terms, and you try to understand the unknown, by communicating with other players of the game or perhaps people who put a lot of work into thinking about these things, then you, it will increase your enjoyment of a game that explicitly encourages you to uh, indulge curiosity and seek discovery. Wow. An external piece of media gave me a crucial key thing I needed as a player, as a, as a, you know, a viewer, a reader, you could even call it, because, I mean, partaking in a story. A crucial element to make me want to finish the story, which makes me want to finish the game. The fact that the game didn't give me that is actually a massive failure in the- It did give you that. You said out of curiosity, you sought out, uh, think of it this way. Upon your journey, you were confused by the pieces of, of, of uh, uh, the scraps of history that you discovered. So you sought out a wise sage who could teach you some things. And upon seeking out that wise sage, you returned uh, to your game with, an, with excitement to seek out what that wise sage had helped enlighten you to. Come on, why is that, how is that a flaw? That's like a game making you live your own journey. That's like, a, that's a masterful way of doing a game. A game that inspires you to seek out an expert so that you can understand it because the world is so compelling, but, um, but, 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 but difficult that you wanted to seek out somebody else who knew more so they could teach you more. That's like a success whatever game yeah but if they gave it to you then farty vid you'd be out of the job no you can, i reckon you could still do by the way i think there are games you could say this type of stuff about um like for example um a game that does have this type of problem ha has the type of problem that shad is getting mad at here is uh like destiny one the first destiny game does not have like contextual um 
con like super contextual storytelling in a lot of the game. Instead, what it has are these little data pads that you pick up, and then when you open the data pad, it says, open the companion the destiny companion app and download the lore entry and then you go to the destiny companion app and you open up what appears to be a themed wikipedia page that just tells you a random story that is not what's happening here What's happening here is that Shad was given all of the tools to assemble a narrative, but he was struggling, and so he sought out someone else to help him, which is valid, but he feels uh, insecure about the fact that he was struggling to assemble a narrative with the pieces that he was given. He openly admitted at the beginning of this video that in his inventory there were all kinds of lore tidbits, but that he didn't know how to put them together. And so he feels invalidated by the fact that he had to seek out a wise sage to help him assemble the, the tidbits that were given. And now he's mad about it and he's doing gamer rage. More clear world building things. Because like I said, there's essential elements that you need that they could still leave out a lot of stuff that Vardy Vidya gives, which gives you heaps of more story and all these things. And like I said, the fact that it gave me so little that I didn't even care about finishing the story, finding out what happened, I feel is actually the biggest criticism you could lob against Elden Ring. Wait, hold on. Let's listen to this again. Me so little that I didn't even care about. The fact that it gave me so little that I didn't even care. He's, he's literally like, I, I think he's being stupid here and not lying. Cause I don't believe he's lying. I believe he's being stupid. You literally said that the stuff that you were given gave you enough curiosity to actively seek out a, a long lore video by a famous lore sage of Elden Ring and then afterwards, you were so excited by what you learned from that guy's videos that you dived back in the game to seek out and find out if what he had said was true. So he's just misrepresenting his own experience with the game. The game didn't give him so little. It gave him so much uh, that he was overwhelmed, but his curiosity led him to further engaging with the game. Chariot says, my emotions are someone else's fault. Oh my god, you're so right! Chariot, this has overlapped with your video about... Oh my god, we're we're this close to reaching a, a theory, a, a the that the shadowversity theory of everything. We are this close to die to like actually distilling the entire psychology of this guy based on his different reviews. The fact that the, the way that he engaged with the last Jedi was the same problem. It's him being angry. Uh, uh, his emotions are the fault of like the game or, or the movie or whatever. What, what a, and, he, and he's missing that in his own retelling of the experience, he's contradicting what he's mad about. His own telling of the experience shows that that's not what actually happened. Oh my God, this video is incredible. Oh my god! ...about finishing the story, finding out what happened, I feel is actually the biggest criticism you could lob against Elden Ring. Now it's funny, I've already kind of talked about the questing and- No, the biggest, the, one of the biggest criticisms you can lob at Elden Ring um, is that they overdid it for the, for the budget and the time and the development time that they had, which led to them taking shortcuts which undermined the final project. For example, having uh, uh, un like 12 uh, repeating bosses for like three different types of boss. There are like three different boss types in the game that have 12 repeated versions of themselves with very, very small recolors and reskins. That's one of the biggest criticisms you could lob at Elden Ring that I think is perfectly fair. I'm not kidding you. I know that that's like an easy criticism. It is an easy criticism to make, but it's a real one. I don't know what the big, I don't know if that's really the biggest criticism, but it's one of them. It's one of the most blatant and obvious flaws of Elden Ring that stands out that if they had been given, if they had given themselves or if they had been given by Bandai Namco just a little bit more time, um, there would have been significantly less repeated bosses. I think the critique of the dungeons is actually slightly different than the cr critique of the repeating bosses. And I'll tell you why at a later point. But anyway, let's go. Let's continue. Let's fucking continue. 
and and stuff in I've got a review on Night's Watch and things and uh, I, first I felt there was barely there was nothing there then I went through this small little thing with one of the it's the first big boss you fight is he Godwin or God is the last God guy Godric oh, Godwin uh, Godfrey no, I think it's Godric no, the first Godfrey is the first Godfrey the first, is the guy that was murdered the first boss you fight the first main boss is Morgoth Fell Omen yeah yeah but it's Godric the Golden okay Godric yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, there was some... Godric the Grafted. Right? He's the Grafted. He's not the Golden. The Golden was um, was his uh, father. He, he, the whole, his whole thing is that he's Grafted. Story there that I was able to feel, hey, there was some mystery around it. I finally, you know, there was uh, soldiers uh, that served. Actually, it might have been the guy that was... But there was, the, you know. But there was all these little, little nuggets about this one character that made me want to meet this character, Okay. But once I met him, that was it. There was no nuggets to want me to find out the, you know, um, uh, the queen, L L L like the queen of the moon person and stuff. She's one of the other bosses. I there was no hints. To Renala? What are, you, what are you talking about? The game literally points you from Godric directly at the location that Renala is in. Like it actually fit literally the game puts an arrow on the map to tell you that and not only that but lore wise um, There's a ton of stuff that you can find out up at that point In fact, if you really want to get technical about it You can find out almost everything in the game that there is to know about Renala without ever even going to Renala's location Because of the way the game is structured Whatever let's continue to her to make me want to find her, her story, and she has a heartbreaking story when you find out about it. Gee, I wish I had that. <clears throat> if, I, if there was things that le made me learn about these bosses, characters. They made me learn about it. See, there's the thing. He wants to be forced to, th he wants to be told. He wants to be forced to, to into a story. He doesn't want to be invited and encouraged to think for himself. You want to know how I found out about Renala? Because I saw this character who, uh, the way that I, my experience of playing Elden Ring, the way I learned about Renala was I encountered Renala having started uh, Ronnie's quest and learned small tidbits about Renala. And I encountered Renala as this tragic figure, a mother desperately, almost um, obsessively staring into an amber egg and almost who doesn't even seem to notice your presence a uh, 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 supposedly a god you hear Renala and you're like oh this is a demigod that I'm seeing and she's like curled up sadly holding an egg and doesn't even notice that you're there even until you slap her in the face with a sword that's how how, uh, 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 how much she's ignoring the entire world and then you go and you see uh, Renala at the height of her power literally throwing a aspect of the moon at you and you go what happened what happened to make Renala go from someone who could wield the raw power of the moon to this sort of collapsed figure staring emptily into a stone egg. And of course, that prompts you to go find out as much as you could. So I ended up spending tons of time in Liurnia talking to every character that I could, you know, filtering through items, trying to find out whatever I could about Renala. And I did. Now, I didn't find out everything, nor I did I have a full picture of the story, so I humbly went and sought out the wisdom of the various sages of Elden Ring lore. Uh, the Vati Vidya, the Zeo Storm, the Smotown. And the, and the sages helped me learn more. I would want, that would pull me to want to learn more, especially if I had the larger story of how the Elden Ring turned the world the way it did and why it's important for my character to find it. I mean, it doesn't even tell you really what the Elden Ring is. When I first started playing, I thought it was an actual physical ring. It's not. <laughs> I thought the Elden Ring was the game I press on Steam. <laughs> and so, frustrating. Now I want to go on to explain some of the great um, world building, you know, backgrounds, uh, but no spoilers, just the essential stuff that I think should have been given to players before they even start started the game. Given to players. Pre-digested.
That's literally what he's asking for. It was given to players. All of he already admitted that it was given to players. Like he, at the, as a part of his critique, he I'm using his own argument here. He said all of these things were given to me as a player, but what he's asking for is for someone else to digest it for him. Which is fine. That's why channels like Vati Vidya and all others are willing to do that sort of thing. They know that some people don't have the time or maybe just want to want to be able to hear a different perspective. Those channels exist for that reason. There's nothing wrong with that, but he's like it's almost like he's insulted that he has to do that. Uh, and instead, that it would somehow be better if the game pre-digested it for him. But it wouldn't be. He already admitted the information was there, that he just wasn't willing to put in the mental work to do it. Chariot says, Shad knows Elden Ring's writing is bad because there isn't a full scene where the player is allowed to explain to Melina that, that as a female, her arms are too weak to wield a sword. A thing that happens in his book. Oh, man. Maybe I should read his book and review it. Oh, Jesus. Let's continue. We're never going to get through this video if we don't continue. Game, really, or the cutscenes, or as they begin, this is early stuff that the character should be exposed to. And uh, I personally would have liked more characterization in the character you play to give personality, maybe dialogue cutscenes. Not even dialogue, because Dragon Storm doesn't have dialogue cutscenes, but your character seems to be interacting more, even though they don't say anything, with the world around them than even Elden Ring does. But it's like your character still has more personality, and that gave me enough investment in my character in, say, Dragon's Dogma that I don't get in Elden Ring. And so with cutscenes, even as basic as Dragon's Dogma, could have revealed enough of the story because Dragon's... Is it Berserk in time? Is Demon Mama reading Berserk? I am. You can actually see my Berserk copies right here, and I have five more volumes on the way that my partner very lovingly got me for my birthday. I am loving Berserk. It's been incredible. But I'm really pissed off. What I'm really pissed off is that nobody told me that fucking, uh, that, that fucking, oh wait, they did tell me, but the book didn't tell me that Guts' name in Japanese is the fucking kanji for the moon. And that's why there's so much moon imagery associated with Guts. And it really fucking pissed me off. He fucking pissed me off. I had to learn that from a friend who lovingly told me about the story and I lovingly appreciated what they told me about the story that I couldn't know because I don't fucking speak Japanese. All right, let's continue. Wait, is he Australian? Whatever, I don't care. Dogma did it. The funniest part about this is that he's not British. Listen, I'm 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 trolling his type. Okay? I'm not troll I'm not impersonating him. I'm impersonating his type. Okay? I'm doing the fucking pronouns guy more, but yeah. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Cancel me for being racist to British people and British associated uh, uh, colonies? Is that what you're gonna do? Is that what you're gonna do? You're gonna cancel me? Oh, 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 the right-wingers are gonna cancel me? They're gonna do a cancel culture because I mis- miscountried them? Mm. Through cutscenes, you find out some essential elements about the story, about, um, why a dragon takes your heart in, um, you know, Dragon's Dogma, why he did that, there's an unbroken cycle you learn about, and, and uh, there's world beyond worlds, and all these really cool things that are revealed just through cutscenes. Okay. I'm mad because this game isn't like this other game. Hey, hot take. There can be more than one way to tell a good story. And sometimes aspects of one story that is good in one story wouldn't be good in a different story. Wow. We are the axis upon which the world turns and doesn't. Time itself grows with your footsteps. So they could have done an Elden Ring, absolutely. 
especially to give you the essential stuff. So I'm gonna share some of those essential stuff, not the world building things, but hopefully enough that will give people investment to perhaps make you want to find out how this story ends and then explain why I think it's so good. Before I get there, if uh, you are interested in world building, because I love world building, that's one of the things what I love about it. Why does he keep saying world building so much? Why, like, I get it, I get that that's a part of this video, but I feel like he keeps saying world building, like, is this like, is it like, I don't know, like he said it so much. I love world building, the world building, it's all about the world building, but what are we talking about? Uh, not everything about writing is world building. Yeah, it feels like he's trying to use the word to mean a bunch of different things, but there's just other words for those things. Writing, okay, but not only that, when I'm role playing, I love world building, creating world for the characters to interact in, but there's also game developers like it, it, it's heaps of fun. But not only world building, just writing in general. The sponsor of this video is absolutely phenomenal. With I don't care. I'm sorry, we're not watching through this fucking weird ass shit. Let's get back to the fucking review. By writing for sponsoring this video. All right, so what is the Elden Ring? Uh, to, again, by me explaining this, it also, I feel, feel, will show some of the big failure in the game. When I started... Chariot says, he keeps saying world building because that's how this particular type of geeks think about art. They're prototypes of conservatives. Every subjectivity is to be chained to obligation. Every free thing is to be enslaved. He also doesn't know anything about writing. He comes from the Wikipedia school of story analysis. I see what you're saying. So there's like an overemphasis on like fixating on the intentionality and the more intentional that it seems to, to somebody reading the story, the more it is because you want the ideal story is one that like mimics biblical st biblical creation myth or something the game i thought the Elden ring was an actual ring that was shattered and there's even a like a cut scene with someone hitting what looks to be an anvil and exploding on the anvil but you find out that that's doing something else to shatter the Elden ring when you find out well, what actually, it is if you look closely you see that that's two people two different people yes one person trying to reforge it one person trying to break it we don't know who they are and i think that's um a good mystery that they can maintain but in terms of just because why you need to know the elden ring what the elden ring is that helps you understand how it affects the world no you're supposed to discover the nature of the elden ring throughout the game's story in fact it's a one of the biggest one of the Oh my God, how can you miss the point of a game so hard? Like half of the of the stories in the game, half of the storylines that you can follow in the game are about people and their own interpretation of what the Elden Ring actually is and how it functions and how it should function. The I, the I, you're not supposed to be told what the Elden Ring is at all you're you're not you're the elden ring is is a uh uh, uh an, a, a, a a almost nonsense almost nonsensical uh unfathomable concept the elden ring is simultaneously a visible series of rings and also the ordering of the universe it is the make that is the domain of the outer gods you're not, if you were just told the Elden Ring is another word for the ordering of the universe, and also it is represented sometimes in actual physical rings that can be displaced and moved around the world by godlike beings, it would be a fucking stupid story. It would be fucking stupid storytelling. Mother Mere set with the five dollars says Demon Mama and Chat gonna be moving soon. I hope that goes very well. Also, thirty months of watching the best channel online and still going strong. Trans rights and trans thriving, indeed. Thank you so much, Mother Mere set. Oh, oh boy, let's go. And this is essential stuff. It isn't spoilery stuff or anything. The Elden Ring is essentially, it's also called the Golden 
lore or golden order. It is the lore, the actual fundamental rules that this pocket universe, whatever, I feel like that's telling. I feel like it's telling that he sees the Elden Ring itself and the Golden Order as one and the same. I feel like that's telling, right? And also kind of perfectly encapsulates the misinterpretation that, or, or, or the frustration he seems to have with the storytelling. The Golden Order is one assembly uh, uh is one orientation of a of arguably only a piece of the elden ring itself is founded on that has been imposed by a godlike entity called the greater will and uh, these laws are defined by runes and the runes like almost exist metaphysically unphysically and the only way that you can kind of see a physical representation of them Actually, they exist both physically and non-physically, which is also a major part of the story. Uh, in the uh, fucking contradictory things occurring in a fictional universe is a huge part of the theming of Elden Ring. Oh, whatever. Are in these strange circles that are made out of these runic symbols, and because they're circles, it's called a ring. The Elden Ring. And it's not really a physical ring at all. It's a kind of a, like more physical representation of a metaphysical law, like thing that holds the laws of the universe together. This is really important because there are greater runes that are part of the... Half of the characters in the game are in the are on quests to discover the true nature of the Elden Ring, to discover the true nature of the Golden Order, to discover the true nature of the Outer Gods. You are also one such character potentially that could be uh, motivated to do so. Or you can literally follow the arrows that are put in the game and do the will of a greater being. That is so fundamental to the story of Elden Ring, it's shocking that he doesn't seem to get it. That he's like, no, you should be told what the Elden Ring is at the beginning of the game. When the whole point is that, like, almost every character is either trying to define their own sense of order or is trying to discover the true nature, if there is one, of this thing that is called the Elden Ring. These circles, uh, for instance, the rune of death. This is, a, this is a really important one. And if you, if this ring gets shattered, that means death can now then be subverted. And so when people die, the bodies don't remain dead. All right. And so the law of the world is not operating according to how it was supposed to have been formed. But that helps. Oh. Mm, okay helps frame what is happening in the world because there's undead everywhere spirits of the dead are roaming around you interact with them you can even summon them and things and this tells you why why that's all happening and why it's important for the elden ring to be reforged because everything's gone to crap but now we understand but some people do not think that the elden ring needs to be reforged in fact, one of the major endings of the game is explicitly not reforging the Elden Ring and instead uh, re basically resetting the universe to a state of, cha of pure chaos, of fire, the flame of frenzy that burns everything to the ground and states that the order was never good, that it cannot be restored, that you can only begin, you can only truly begin again by torching everything to ash. Oh man, uh, God, oh and it man, this, a little this bit is so better annoying to as me. As to how it all went to crap, I, or why it went to crap, as to what caused it and how it happened, that is still great elements that you could still find out, for instance, who shattered the Elden Ring and why. That's Those are great questions that hopefully would now invest the player, the audience, to discover the answers of. But if we don't care that it was shattered in the first place, why do we care for it to get reformed? When I first started playing Elden Ring, the shattering, the big bad event caused wars, uh, undead were raising, I don't know how, because I didn't even know what the Elden Ring was. But now- 
almost like you're not supposed to know what the Elden Ring is. That you're supposed to want to go find out what the Elden Ring is. That it should spark curiosity and interest, which you already admit that it did, to go find out why these strange things are happening. If I understand that this is a fundamental, like a essential metaphysical thing that holds the very principles of this universe in place. So the laws in which govern reality, life, death, magic, all of that stuff. But what's also interesting, there are other sources of power in this universe. And that's separate to the Elden Ring even. So, so in a way, it's the one ring to rule them all. I thought I was getting strong Lord of the Rings vibes, which I feel is a great thing. There's a ton of Lord of the Rings references in it. Just to man who has only ever read Lord of the Rings. Ooh, ooh, this is giving me this this is giving me a lot of Lord of the Rings vibes. I'm getting super Lord of the Rings vibes from this. It's literally the boss baby argument. There's heaps. I, th this is one of the great compliments of Elden Ring. It draws inspiration from so many huge fantasy properties that you get all together that has kind of repackaged it in a new interpretation which feels Nobody tell him. Nobody tell him that this right here is where every single reference in the entirety of Elden Ring comes from, okay? Right here, shh, shh, don't tell him. It wasn't from Lord of the Rings, it was from Berserk. Shh, 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 nobody tell him. God, oh wow. Nobody tell him, okay? fresh yet familiar and that it was way closer to a song of ice and fire because it was literally co-authored by george rr R. martin well uh, george rr R. martin um he 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 george rr R. martin yeah it was i guess it's fair to say it was co-authored basically george rr R. martin was tasked with uh creating with creating a a prequel world to Elden Ring that uh, the that that then the shattering was going to undo. So George R. R. Martin basically set up the the royal families. He set up the ordered version of the world, and we step into the shattered and disordered version of the world that uh, that uh, that George R. R. Martin set up. So a lot of the the lore that is essential to the story of Elden Ring was not actually written by George R.R. R. Martin. He wrote, a, he made up a lot of the royal, of like the different families, the factions that existed before the world fell into the shattered state that it's in. But yeah, let's continue, let's continue is a massive achievement. I couldn't give it a greater compliment almost than something that executes it's classic elements in a new, interesting way that is familiar, yet different, and also executed masterfully as well. There are other elements that I really like that I'll, I'll get to, but going back to the Elden Ring thing. Uh, one, I actually, like, for me, I think it would have been appropriate to call it the Elden Rune, and the Elden Rune is made up of greater runes and everything, because Ring, it's a, it's a, a, uh, like, circle of shiny runes, bigger runes or smaller runes, that actually doesn't even make a perfect ring. It's like there are multiple. circles. If you want to know what the Elden Ring is, it's literally the, the opening thing. That symbol in the background is literally the complete and whole Elden Ring. That's what it is. I didn't know that. <laughs> no. No, it isn't. No, it fucking isn't. The entire point is that there's there can never be a, a, a single true and whole Elden Ring that every single order either adds or removes from the Elden Ring based on the will of that of that strong person, which is part of the reason why the Shabriri ending, uh, the Chaos Flame ending, is to burn the entire universe functionally, to burn the game universe to the ground. There is no all of the endings, every single one of them, with the exception of the default ending of the game, where you just become the next Elden Lord. 
um, involves you changing, changing this shape into a new order, reforging it. This is this version is not the completed Elden Ring. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, this particular symbol is the symbol of Radagon's Golden Order, specifically. Like, even the explanation I gave you, I was thinking, well, it would still form some type of circle ring thing. But no, it's actually, it doesn't look like a ring at all. It's not this a ring. Is a, this is a absolutely stupid and brain dead critique. I feel like I should almost skip this. It's a, it's a symbol made up of different circles. Should be called the Elden Rune. But maybe they called it ring because they want the Lord of the Ring connection vibe or anything. But there are other Lord of the Rings um, uh, similarities that actually make it far more Lord of the Rings-esque than just having the word ring. Uh, and this is a, a big compliment. It's the mythical nature of the world itself, okay? Where, look at Game of Thrones. That's a very grounded, realistic world that's on a planet and... Uh, and most of the people are just regular mortals and everything like that. Where if you look at Lord of the Rings, a lot of the individuals are near demigods. They have insane power. They have connections and understanding to the very formation and order and structure of the world. Gandalf is not just some roaming wizard that was a regular person born and he learned magic as he grew up. No, no, These are mythical entities, okay, in a mythical realm that has a land of undying and immortality and middle earth is literally this this almost pocket landmass that's in the middle of these cosmic things okay well have a look at olden ring it is the lands between oh man this is just going to be the boss baby everything is just man who has only read lord of the rings Boy, this sure seems like I'm getting a lot of Lord of the Rings vibes from this. Oh, it's like dude. The, the, the lands are in the middle, and if it's somewhat Earth-like, you could almost call it, it's like a Middle Earth. All right. See the connections, right? That's a far greater... I've never... I don't think I've ever... I don't think I've ever said this on stream but I feel like this guy could do with a little more schizophrenia, okay? Just a little bit more, okay? All of all of the ways in which Elden Ring invites you to draw connections. Can I show you guys what I'm talking about here? Ready, watch this. Okay, I'm gonna blow your fucking mind, all right? Oh shit, why is it so small? No, hold on, this needs to be bigger. Hold on a second. Yeah, here we go. Open the image, here we go. Ready? All right, I'm gonna blow your minds. While this guy is thinking about, oh, the lands between? Well, between is kind of like being in the middle and land is another word for earth, middle earth. Here is the true knowledge. The true Elden Ring lore master schizophrenic power. The the lands between is in the cur is in the shape of a curled finger, the curled finger, the two fingers, the three fingers, the fingers of the world, the bloody fingers, and of course the old FromSoft critique uh, slash community in joke, which is that you must play Elden Ring games with the curled finger technique, where you use your middle and ring fingers to press the shoulder buttons, and you control the D-pad and the buttons with a curled finger. A curled finger which became a central piece of imagery throughout the entirety of Elden Ring. A game in which using the furled finger from soft technique is arguably the best way to mechanically play the game. I'm not kidding, by the way. Uh, uh, the the one of the things that people have pointed out about specifically, I believe, 
if I'm not mistaken, the curled finger thing comes from uh, the Armored Core games, where the setup of the controller in encourages you to uh, to bend your finger to be able to hold on to a single button. But uh, the, the dash button, uh, particularly being located on the B button, means that it's actually quite viable to play the game holding your controller uh, like this. Okay, look at the controller holding your controller like this, where you can easily press the B button and quickly access your other buttons, maintaining running, jumping, healing, and uh, dual wielding, and be able to change your face buttons without any interruption whatsoever. But now, nah, go ahead with the, uh, go ahead with the Middle Earth connection, okay, my man, go ahead. Go ahead with the Middle Earth connection, not the fact that there are 900 curled finger items in the game. The map looks like a curled finger. The main deities that you engage with are fucking fingers. And you play the game with your fingers. Oh yeah, dude, it's definitely though, Middle Earth though, you're super deep. The connection to um, the Lord of the- Fingers wear rings? Yeah. <laughs> rings world building than just the word ring, but they, I feel, wanted to create this mythical magical place where this doesn't even, it doesn't even feel like it's on a planet it's this pocket realm universe where land seemed to be floating somewhere all right it's the lands between of the that are that's in between that uh, these cosmic schloop says halo 2 players call it the claw tactic and we use it to double shot Entities, there is this greater will, but this greater will is somewhat benevolent because he imposed a golden order to help hold the rules of this pocket universe together. But this golden order, which is represented and held together by the runes that frame it, that forms some type of ring like symbol, the Elden Ring. Well, I, I gotta correct you there. Yeah. So the Elden Ring was created by the greater will. Yeah. The golden order was created by Marika when she shattered the Elden Ring. But uh, the golden order, I thought, referred to the um, uh, the laws that the Elden Ring defined. Go check. I, I, I did. There's another great thing. There is the the holy magic, right? That is uh, founded on the uh, you know, faith um, uh, character stat. The way they operate and the way they, they com can combat undead is by reasserting the Golden Order, which I thought referred to the order or law of the universe, um, um, in, a, in a small location around them. And if that law is back in place that was shattered when the Elden Ring was shattered, undeath simply cannot exist in that state and then they die. Yeah, it looks like you might have been right. Aha! I thought I was right! But the thing that I saw <laughs> said that it was done when the thing did the thing. Ah, oh, the first time, it's so ironic. The first time we see him not raging and having a good time in the video is, is what I was describing at the beginning. When he chooses to engage in exactly the, the way that Elden Ring intends you to engage with its floor. He, ha he has his own interpretation. Someone else challenges him with a different interpretation. They go back and forth on it. They argue and come to an understanding. And here he is actually having fun for the first time in the video. Oh my God. By the way, my, my, my rant at two minutes into this goddamn review was so in is genius and prophetic. Just, I want you all to recognize that. My research. Yeah, so the Golden Order refers to the lore uh, of the universe that was uh, framed and held together by the Elden Ring. Is he wearing leather armor? I think it's fake. I think it's like padded armor. I don't think it's actually leather. But he has leather straps on. He is wearing heavy, heavy armor. Maybe. <laughs> Shad, this lore's come this this story is coming from, you know, it's it's been worked on for years by multiple people, translated from Japanese, you know. <laughs> we're just making interpretations on it. We can't take it literally. <laughs> This is just like a small thing, but again, I really like because it shows the care and attention to detail they've done in the world building. Magic, especially holy magic, like oftentimes is seen as uh, extra, you know, supernatural. It, it is a, a power that is on top of the just 
laws of physics that's in the world and uh, so it's a greater energy greater magic everything like that where Elden Ring's interpretation is that no 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 holy magic in Elden Ring isn't something that's being injected on top of the world it's uh, the world is broken and holy magic is the uh... Sukhoi says it's not fake it's real armor called a, prig a brigandine and it has plates hidden in it apparently leather armor wasn't a thing he makes a big deal out of it and gets really angry at people when they get that wrong oh, whatever I don't care the ability to return small sections of the world back into its natural state, which then subverts the, the breaking or shattering that happened, which it has allowed undead. And so, for instance, the way you combat undead is by re-establishing the correct order of the rune of death, and then undeath can't survive around that, and that's how you combat undeath. And so it's like bringing it back up to its normal state. That, and for no, I, I, I don't think that's correct. Uh, I, if I'm not mistaken, now I could be wrong about this, but I think the reason that holy magic, uh, defeats the undead, uh, is because it, um, it, it like, it, it's not about, uh, like restoring the, the rune of death because the rune of death has been removed from the golden order. Uh, it's about basically claiming their body for the world, for the, for the, uh, the, the great, the great tree. Uh, the Elden, what's it called? Why, why am I blanking on the name of the fucking tree? Um, <laughs> the Erd tree. Thank you, the Erd tree. Um, that, 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 uh, which is also the reason why, um, bodies, dead, dead people that are buried in the roots of the Erd tree don't come back to life. Um, they come back to life elsewhere, uh, because the rune of death has been removed. Um, which was a sort of an, an unintended consequence um uh the the when upon the crafting of the golden order the rune of death was removed so that the basically so that the children of the gods could live forever they wanted to continue to live and the side effect of this of course was that uh lots of people continued to live forever so the way that they get around this is by using the power of the erd tree to basically claim their bodies as matter to be used by the erd tree um yeah and there were of course um you know particularly notable uh, 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 m points where this doesn't happen or it's, or it's uh, inverted or, or um, subverted is a better word, not inverted, subverted. Like for example, when um, the dead body of, uh, of, God, of Godfrey, Godwin, Godfrey, I always get them mixed up too. Easy to get them mixed up. That's what happens when you use angloid names. Um, but, uh, but the um uh but but uh godfrey after he, he was stabbed with the rune of of death and it it uh it it killed his soul and someone else's body his his sort of soulless dead body became the host for uh uh, uh for the death root the death root which became a parasite on the Erd tree. And that's why if you go down to the very roots of the Erd tree, you find his dead body, uh, uh, basically uh, his from his dead body, death root is growing out and, and absorbing energy, energy from the Erd tree itself. Yeah. Ronnie stole the rune of death in the shattering. I, I think Ronnie didn't actually steal the rune itself, um, but Ronnie uh, uh, used the power, w basically snuck in and used the rune of death to empower the black knives, um, which is why there's a whole bunch of, of black l knives sitting around in the game that you can use that wield a fragment of the power of the rune of death. I don't think you might be right, but I don't think she ever actually had full possession of the Rune of Death. If I'm not mistaken, Maliketh maintained power over the Rune of Death. Or Godwin, yeah, Godwin. Anyway, let's continue. Let's continue. We got to finish this video. To me, that's just a creative, great interpretation explanation of holy magic that is different to all the things that we've done 
but it has an underlining through logic which is really satisfying because I can kind of see how that works and when you see how that works you're more satisfied uh, uh, when you see it actually play out in the world. So going back to the mythical nature uh, of this world this is what I feel is really similar to Lord of the Rings, which get, it gives me very strong Lord of the Rings vibes, where you have these uh, godlike, you know, uh, mortals over there. By the way, I was giving him a lot of shit about the references to Lord of the Rings. There are obviously direct references to Lord of the Rings. The, the, um, the, uh, the, the, what are they called? The night, the night riders are literally Nazgul. They're almost one for one Nazgul. They're black riders who ride on giant angry black horses and they screech and they chase you only at night. They're ring wraiths. There are obviously Lord of the Rings references in this game. I just feel like, um, I feel like he's over imposing references to Lord of the Rings and ignoring what's actually in front of him in lieu of making comparisons to Lord of the Rings. It's a limitation. Sometimes people are limited by stuff that they've read before and, and convincing themselves that similarities are because of direct references when they're not necessarily. Like, I don't actually think that the lands between is supposed to be Middle Earth. Um, I think, if anything, it's a reference to Dark Souls 2. Um, an earlier game in FromSoft's library um, where, what's the name of the, the place? The place between is the place that you start in the beginning of Dark Souls 2. Uh, Dark Souls 2, the director of Dark Souls 2 is also the director of Elden Ring. The lands betwixt, things betwixt. That's what it's called, things betwixt in the beginning of Dark Souls 2. Yeah. A immortal because Marika is the immortal. She's the queen, but then you, she has demigod children, and so these aren't regular people. They're, their power is tied almost inseparably to the very fundamental building blocks of this universe. Is it actually Lord of the Rings, or is it more Norse myth? Well, I mean, that's, that's of course, you could say that it's directly pulling from Norse myth, which a lot of Lord of the Rings is directly pulling from as well. That Lord of the Rings in, in, includes uh, uh, an incredible amount of reference to Norse, to Norse myth in addition to, of course, Christian myth. And the gods of this world, well, God, it's a great entity, but you do find out there are other gods that other people can draw things. And there's other power sources as well. For instance, um, the Elden Ring is uh, connected to the power of the stars. In actual fact, one of the explanations of where the Elden Ring comes from is from a star that was granted by the Greater Will, but then there is power you can draw from the moon. And this is where Glintstone Sorcery and there's such good lore behind all this, like, like the, the sources of magic, how they work. Why are you mad then? That's good. You you should be excited about this. Why are you, what are you mad about? The reasons that um, for, uh, you know, Glintstone Sorcery, you need a catalyst. The also, okay, this is a really small and pointless critique, but directly underneath this image that he has of the Elden Ring is Robert Jordan, the Wheel of Time. And I think it's really funny that he would critique the Elden Ring not being a, a, a single ring when he has displayed right here the Wheel of Time, which is a symbol of multiple interlocked rings. Oh, the Wheel of Time. Well, it's not really a wheel, is it now? I'm so sorry. I think we're getting to the end of my ability to say anything useful about his critique. Stones and things that I... So and they also inform the, the different powers. It not only inform the abilities you have and the magic mm -hmm. you can use, but they inform the actual factions and motivations of yes. the factions in the story. Yes, like there, there are factions that devoted themselves to different powers, like the Lurea Lucaria Academy, then there's the um, Curian Royal House uh, and things. They have such phenomenal lore and history and, uh, and politics okay. and how they intertwine. Okay, there you go. You have it. The lore and politics are super interesting. Fine with the the large players of this world, like Queen Marika, her husband, all these things that just makes me want to find these characters in the world, see what happens. I'm invent. Oh my god, he fucking admit it. Oh my god, he fucking admit it. The, okay, okay. There's nothing else. I, I we have to wrap it here. Okay, we're gonna call it good here. We're at 30 minutes into his review, and I don't expect him adding anything else. At multiple points in this review, he has angrily shouted at the camera 
about the fact that he's mad that the delivery wasn't exactly the way that he wanted while counterfactually with his own experience pointing out that the result of the game's lore delivery is that he was more interested in the game and that he was motivated to play the game more to go seek out what he could learn about this but that he got confused at certain steps and had to ask other people for help and apparently that makes his penis feel small which is why he needed to go on a gamer rage about that should i continue should I watch more of this? I feel like we've given this a fair shake at 30, at more than 50% of the video, but I don't feel like we're going anywhere. I feel like he's repeated the same critique like four or five times and also negated his own critique with his own retelling of his own fucking experience with the game. Like, I... Uh... What's he talk about? Let me see. Should I jump forward and see what he talks about later on? Oh my god, why does he have why does he have League of Legends up on the screen? Okay, I kind of need to not find out why he's talking about League of Legends. Hold on a second. And then we'll play Dark Souls. These incredibly awesome things, okay? It's phenomenal. Like you could make if you had a game at like movie adaptations of games, all right? Arcane has shown us that it can be done really, really well. They could make like an epic fantasy uh, trilogy or whatever about the story of Elden Ring that would easily be as good as Lord of the Rings. And it wouldn't be Elden Ring anymore. It wouldn't be FromSoft anymore. It would be something else. I reckon if it was executed, they needed good. They would need good writers, but the the building blocks are there. the The consistency of the world, the the setup of the story, and even you kind of like the story that you get to find out if you understand what's going on through the game. You you could convert that into like the main character. The main character would be this heroic tarnish that's you know takes upon themselves to reclaim the Elden Ring and save this world that has fallen into. I hell no N wrong incorrect uh, incorrect the best if there were to ever do if there was ever to be a best version a uh, single ca canon story also great freeze frame me when I me when a game asks me to use my brain power and treats me like an adult that, who can think but anyway, if there was ever to be a, a, a narrativized version of Elden Ring, the only correct answer is that you would have to have the main character be someone who ends up falling in uh, uh, with the, um, the Dung Eater. No joke. That is the only correct version of, uh, if you needed to make a Netflix version of, the, of Elden Ring, that is the only interesting one because how, how, oh my God, you're telling me it wouldn't be fascinating to dive into the psychology of someone who decides that the fucking ring of filth, the, the ring of rape and filth and violence and disease needs to be put as, as a core part of the Elden Ring? Oh man, come on. But honestly though, I'm joking. I'm not entirely joking. I'm only partially joking, but um, because I do think that that could be a cool, a cool story to tell. Uh, why does this person become compelled uh, uh, to become the most vile person ever? If you've ever done, um, if you've ever played the um, the dung eater storyline, first of all, his name is the loathsome dung eater. Uh, that in and of itself makes you go, what the fuck is going on here? But secondly, if you've ever done his storyline in the game, it really is the most, uh, it is like the most hate-pilled uh, uh, path. It's like his entire arc is, uh, is, is chained by, uh, or, or is like, his entire story is defined by the worst aspects of the world that he lives in and his spite against the world that created those things. 
and it's like a inversion where he's like, no, uh, the worst products of this world are its treasures and it's incredible and it would be amazing to try to see somebody try and tell uh, a story like that. I think it would be very compelling, but also being 100% real, uh, if you tried to change Elden Ring into a traditional narrative, like a, a movie, it would, it would completely and fundamentally change what Elden Ring is because Elden Ring's type of story is damn near impossible to tell in, in that type of media. Elden Ring is a very game game. That's just what it is. It doesn't emulate cinema. It doesn't emulate literature. It is. It embraces the fact that it's a video game and it actively encourages you to engage with it as a video game and with other people who are playing the game concurrently to you. Anyway, all right, let's see. I want to I want to see if there's any last thoughts he has to say at the end of this. I want to see what his conclusions are, and then we'll call it good. As soon as you, even if you get given that, the stuff that we're explaining clearly here, if they explain that clear in the beginning cutscene, I'll be more invested in, wow, Queen Marika, I really want to find out what's going on. Oh my going. God, literally that's it. That's his only critique for a 50 minute video. We're right back at square one. We could have literally just stopped at the first three minutes. Hang on, why did she do this and everything? And, uh, and even- Why she did it is the, is the, it's the fucking main thing. It's one of the main things you're trying to figure out. Why would you want to be told that in the first five minutes of the game? Why would you want to be told one of the core mysteries of the entire game, one of the most compelling mysteries that people are still arguing about today in the first five minutes? Why? You already admitted that the game intrigued you and caused you to continue to seek it. Ah, oh, fucking God. Holy shit. Oh man. Oh my, oh my fucking God. Oh, oh, this guy, this fucking guy. Why? Why would you talk about it like this? Okay. Uh, the more I learn about Shadowversity, I think that Chariot is 100% correct. I think that this is a man who gets angry when, when he gets angry at, he, he gets angry at other people for, for the emotions that he feels. Zeostorm has a 10 minute response where he brutally owns Shad in the marketplace of videos. Oh, we need to see it. Hold on. I need to see this. I fucking love Zeostorm. <gasps> yes, he does. How have I never seen this? All right, what's going on? This is, this is my chance to show off Zeostorm relevantly in the moment. By the way, Zeostorm is one of my favorite Elden, uh, one of my favorite FromSoft lore channels. Uh, he does more than that, but mostly what he does is FromSoft stuff. Um, Zeostorm is amazing. I love him. I literally recommend him to everyone that I meet, and I want to watch his response. Let's hear what he has to say. Zeostorm, here's the video with the channel attached. Bam, and this will then we'll play Dark Souls. What's going on, guys? So yesterday I made a video breaking down the themes in Elden Ring and how they're an allegory for a lot of the themes found in Alchemy. Which I believe that's one of my best videos I've ever made, so I highly recommend you- I agree. Fantastic video. Zeostorm's Alchemy video is really good. Check that out. But on that video, one of you guys left a comment telling me to go look at this video by Shadowversity, which is an hour-long rant where he explains why he's upset with Elden Ring's story. So I went and I watched the video and by now I finished the video because I want to make sure and not misrepresent anything he's saying. But by the end of the video I had understand that the entire fundamental of his point is built on a misunderstanding. Now the re Oh my god! He lit- Oh my god, what did I say? Zeo Storm, Zeo Storm agreeing with me. On the one Zeostorm video I've never seen, and Zeostorm saying the exact word-for-word -word conclusion that I came to two minutes into this fucking video is so validating.
You have no idea. I am like Zeostorm's biggest fucking fan, okay? I've been following Zeostorm since way before he got his giant spike. And I know it's just it's just that we happen to align, but it, it makes me feel like I've done a good thing. Like I've done a good analysis to have independently come to the exact same fucking conclusion. <laughs> oh my god. Oh. The reason I think it's important to cover this is because number one, Isn't that he is literally a very what you said to me that's literally what i said a large audience and he's telling them something that ultimately isn't true and number two with elden ring we're seeing a lot of new players who aren't familiar with the souls games and in a roundabout way through this video he's leading them astray and causing them to not understand how the story in these games work now i am praising the sun so hard right now Oh my god, Look, listen to the justice in Zeostorm's voice. You, Shadowversity, you are a false knight leading the players, the newcomers to this universe astray. Uh, it's excellent. This is the most epic. This is the most epic thing I've ever seen in my entire life. I am soying so hard. I, my, my soy levels are off the charts, okay? Now, I also want to approach this in the most respectful way possible. In no way is this an attack on his channel. I think his channel's really cool. But the things he's saying in the video are ultimate. Now, let's not go that far, my friend. Ultimately not true. And I want to clear this up. They are completing the story of Elden Ring by needing to look at tweets from the developers. It is that incomplete in the game. Yes, I'm saying incomplete. They have actually left out essential elements in the story from the game for people to even piece it together. Even the detectives can't complete the story from the game. They need to get external material to complete it. The fundamental argument that he tries to make in this video is that Elden Ring's story is somehow incomplete. That the game is shooting itself in the foot by not providing the player enough information to understand what's going on. Now, if you're somebody that's beaten the game, you probably have a good understanding of what your objective was, why you did it, and who the core players in the story were. But the problem is, you probably don't understand everything. I can guarantee you don't understand everything. Because at the end of the day, this is a game where you're not supposed to know everything. I mean, the game has five different endings. And because of- What? By the way, I'm, j I'm not gonna lie. The, the scars that the Black Knives dig into Godwin's back are so disgusting and also so compelling to me. It is, that is just, that is a, a genuinely, it, it provokes a visceral reaction every single time I see this image. Every single time. That's nothing to do with what we're talking about here. Let's continue. That it's going to be open-ended. But with this in mind, let's take a look at some of his main points. Essential for the player, uh, the audience, to understand enough of what's going on to be invested to see what the results will be. To me, that's what I feel is essential world building uh, or storytelling enough to invest the audience the reader to want to know the conclusion now why do i feel elden ring doesn't do that because i understood very little going into the game there was an elden ring it was a sh it was shattered i needed to find it i didn't know know why i didn't really know what it was causing all these bad things okay the world has gone to crap how and the how isn't that difficult to explain. In fact, I want to explain it to you and also by doing it, show you how awesome and incredible this world building is and explain why I think it's so great. And in doing that, I would also be providing with people who don't understand the lore or the story, the thing that was lacking for me, the essential story or enough of the story that you need to know to be invested, to want to know how it concludes. Here is where I believe the misunderstanding begins. His main point is that the game does not present the main conflict and the main objective to the player early enough to get them invested in the story and get them to keep playing. I can understand why he might feel that way, but there is a reason for it. And let me explain. The game begins with an expositional cutscene that details the main objectives of Artarnished. 
It tells us that the Elden Ring, the most powerful object in the world, was shattered, and that the demigod children of Queen Merica now hold the shards to that Elden Ring, and that it's our job to seek out those shards, find the Elden Ring, and become the Elden Lord. It also tells us about other tarnished on the journey that are going to be helping us out along the way. That is very little information. But here's the catch. That is also all the information that the character in the game, the tarnished that we play as, knows. Because we play as a tarnished of no renown. We are not the chosen one of the story. It's the other tarnished that are the chosen ones. Gideon Offnir, Gold Mask, and the others at Round Table Hold. They're the important ones. We are one of thousands or perhaps millions of unnamed, unworthy tarnished who don't deserve to know all the specifics. We have to earn the right to learn the world building because why would Gideon Offnir, the character that is our exposition dump, bother investing his time into a tarnished he doesn't believe in. It's not until after we kill Godric and claim our first rune that he decides to go into detail about things like the Golden Order or the Greater Will, all of the things he goes on to complain about not knowing. It's obscure by design. But let's move on. I almost stopped playing Elden Ring because uh, I got immersed in the uh, uh, gameplay. Really, I was having fun, but then I, I got that taste. That was fun. I decided, okay, Maybe what I'll invest my enjoyment in the game is I'll try a different build. So I'd made a new character, Magic. <clears throat> got her quickly to like level 30 or something using all the, the fun little farming spots and everything. Got some of the cool spells. Got the wave, shockwave thing. Went to one of the first areas. Clear, like, so I did all that. And then I was like, oh, that was, that was fun. Now I'm done with Magic already. Uh, I know I could get the big Kamehameha thing, but <clears throat> I know how that would go. I know that this is, a, I'm going back and talking about Shadowversity again. The point here is to listen to what Zeostorm has to say, but I gotta say, it's also funny that he picks on magic in Elden Ring when the quests, just the, just the quest to go and get the, what he calls the Kamehameha, uh, the stream of stars. Uh, I can't remember exactly what the spell is called. A, 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 cosmic jet stream, some crazy shit like that. Um, but what he calls the Kamehameha, Comet Azure. Um, Comet Azure, the storyline to go get that is one of the most interesting side quests in the entire game. It's one of the most complicated and compelling and interesting ones. It takes you literally into the depths of the earth to find a guy whose head turned into a gem because he thought about magic too hard. He thought about magic so hard that his head turned into a gem. Like, what a weird thing to, what a weird thing to write off. And I was like, oh, wow. I've had this feeling with a lot of games. Like, I'm already done with Elden Ring. Like I've immersed myself in so, enough of the gameplay that I, I know, I've enjoyed it, but now there's nothing holding me in, in Elden Ring. And so I was ready to stop. But out of curiosity, because there was so much I didn't know what's going on, I was like, I'll check out a lore video. The thing is, when I checked out that lore video, it was one Vardy videos, it was so damn good, the world building, and I want to explain why it's good, I'm going to get there, was awesome that it pulled me back into the game where I had to know, I wanted to, one, interact with these characters that I learned about in the world building, so I want to find them, and if I fight them or if I injure I want to see what happens in their story, and I want to know what the... ...that I found about in the world building. See, there's him using that word again. He uses the word w world building to mean a bunch of different stuff. So it's we, like a catch-all phrase. It's very strange. ...what the end will be. And so an external piece of media gave me a crucial key thing I needed as a player, as a, as a you know, a viewer. Also, sorry I missed this super chat before. Sean Miller with the $10 says, I could listen to you talk about game lore for hours. Thank you so much for supporting the show, first of all. And second of all, wish granted. I've been talking about Dark Souls lore, specifically Elden Ring lore, for hours now. We're a reader, you could even call it, because, I mean, partaking in a story. Crucial elements to make me want to finish the story, which makes me want to finish the game. 
Here is where another very big fundamental flaw in his video arises. He explains that he played up to Godric, the first demigod, and then restarted the game, played through it again, only up to the first main boss, and then quit because he felt like he had experienced the game in full. Now, I believe that speaks for itself, so I'm not going to harp on that. Elden Ring is a massive game. Limgrave and Stormvale Castle is less than 5% of the map, so it reasons that you're not going to get the core main elements of the story and the huge climaxes of world building that you're looking for in basically the tutorial area. The game has so much to offer and if you're playing in this huge world that you haven't even scratched the surface of, then obviously you're not going to scratch the surface of the story too. But here's the thing, if I am so goddamn excited to play Elden Ring with you all. He had taken the time to read the lore of the items he found along his way, and keep a keen eye out for the environmental storytelling. He would have found the traces of everything he was looking for. And I've got a video coming out about this, probably the next video, but Stormvale Castle offers hints to everything and some of the biggest twists in the game. Just because it's not shown through a cutscene doesn't mean it doesn't exist. But I want to move on to another point. See Fort Renala? <laughs> How, how cool was the second phase? How beautiful was that? The big moon and everything? Ah, oh, it, was, it was an amazing game, right? I wouldn't have gotten there, though, if I didn't look into the world. But, like, I would have missed out on all this cool stuff. And also, the thing is, though, when her fight, it was like confusing gobbledygook what she was saying. Then I looked up some of her history. Huh? I saw what the references she was saying in her gobbledygook and how awesome her and her heartbreaking her story is. Yet I still didn't get any of that in any version of clarity from the game itself. She's, she's, Did we watch this part? Did I just blank out him saying that? I feel like we watched this segment of his video and I didn't... Maybe I... Oh yeah, this was the... Wait, okay, I did, but I just only addressed the second half. I didn't even get to the gobbledygook part. Jesus. Hugging a golden egg. What is that thing? I find out that this, that was not, I didn't find out in the game. I found out from an external source that was actually a gift from a spurned lover who she's really heartbroken over and hung up on and, how, and the reasons why he left and all that stuff. And it's this heartbreaking tale. This perfectly illustrates the problem with what he says, because everything he just said is objectively wrong. Ranala's story is perfectly told. If you take the time to explore Rhea Lucaria, you'll find the teleporter that takes you to the Church of Vows, where the NPC tells you all of Ranala's yeah. story. The game tells- I literally- that- I didn't even think of that. I didn't even remember that the teleporter to the literal exposition dump, one of the few exposition dumps actually in the game, is literally in her zone. I literally completely forgot about that. ...you the story. Just because you didn't take the time to explore and didn't find it, that isn't a fault of the game. And the video is an hour long, but I kid you not, everything he says in the entire video can be traced back to that. Simply put, the story of the game does exist, but he did not give it the respect it deserves to seek it out. And ultimately, he doesn't understand the appeal of the story. It's open-ended and obtuse for a reason. Yes, he's correct in saying the story doesn't have an ending, but it's meant to be completed by the player's interpretation, just as yes. you would if you were the thank tarnished you. in the game. Thank you, Zeostorm! Oh, thank you, Zeostorm! Oh, blessings! I give... Can we... Can I get in chat? Can I get... Can we get a, uh, a, a, a plus... Uh, updoot on this on this fucking glowing orange message that has been left. I want to see it glow gold with how many how many upvotes and uh, uh, praise be that we get on it. A praise a the sun to Zeo Storm. Should have improved the immersion into Elden Ring's story vastly more than what you get in the game. Is that every time you reach a new area, they have a cutscene with Melina, and she can warn you about the dangers of the area and its current state, and propose some type of mystery referencing perhaps the boss battle that is to come. And that would have made Bruh. me at least, and I feel a lot of players vastly more invested in the story and what's going on in each new area. Because in the area with the academy, I had no idea what was going on in the academy and I knew nothing of the story to draw me there apart from I saw a really big place that maybe I'll explore but if I knew some things about it the dangers that were there who is in power who I might have to fight I would have been so much more invested to want to find out what happened and then I also might have understood some of those cryptic messages in the cutscene in what plays after you defeat the big boss of that area 
The game quite literally does exactly what he says right there. When you discover a new area or kill a demigod, there will be an NPC called a finger reader on the natural path that tells you about the area and its ruler. If that's not enough for you, you can go back to Round Table Hold and talk to Sir Gideon Offnir and he will tell you all of the exposition you need on the remaining demigods, where to find them, and their story. And that's what I was saying. Every point he mentions in this video simply comes down to the fact that he did not take the time to explore and didn't give the story enough respect to seek it out. And that's what has me a little bit worried about the future of From Software games. We as Souls fans know how to look for these things, know how to treat these games, and that's why we love them so much is because there's really nothing else like them. Elden Ring is not trying to be like other games where it spoon feeds you the story, no matter how good it is. And so please do not get this taken away from us by trying to promote this as a problem of the game rather than a problem of the user. The story is- It is literally, it is, it is, it is, it is the, it is absolutely a problem of the users. It is a problem of, of angry, uh, super, 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 uh, in their feelies players who refuse to engage with art on its own terms, demanding that they be fed pablum, uh, a, in a more comfortable position. They're literally just sitting back and going, mommy, bring me the fucking story complete it's all there in the game you just have to go look for it but guys that's gonna pretty much do it for the video i thought this was important to talk about because a lot of people are gonna see that and think it's a problem with elden ring when the things he's saying are factually untrue but i hope you enjoyed the video if you did please leave a like on it and do me a favor and go check out the alchemy Fucking video i worked really hard on that and legendary. i think you're gonna enjoy it a lot Subscribe. by the way the reaction we've just watched is from zeostorm zeostorm is one of my favorite channels i highly recommend you check out Zeostorm. Uh, obviously, Zeostorm is considerably larger channel than me, but regardless, uh, I was extremely, extremely happy. Um, uh, 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 oh my god. Oh my god. Shadiversity wrote. Oh my god. Shadiversity wrote a giant fucking essay in response to this. Oh, he mad. The next part is a massive misrepresentation of what I said so much so it's a flat out lie. You claimed I felt I had experienced the game in full. I never said that. You literally did. You, he literally said that. He literally said almost exactly that. Dude, Shadowversity is so fucking sad. Okay, everybody. Oh my God. That is so pathetic. Didn't he almost literally, almost, almost literally say that? He said, hold on, we can go back and watch it. Hold on, let's see. It's the second point in the video. That was fun, now I'm done with magic already. Uh, I know I could get the big Kamehameha thing, but <clears throat> I know how that would go. And I was like, oh, wow. I've had this feeling with a lot of games that I'm already done with Elden Ring. Like I've immersed myself in enough of the gameplay that I, I know, I've enjoyed it, but now there's nothing holding me. In that is almost exactly what he said. He said, I've, I've, I'm already done with Elden Ring. I've, ex I've, I've, I've experienced everything and I'm fully immersed. I've had this feeling with a lot of games that I'm already done with Elden Ring. Like I've... How? Oh my God, whatever. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. We can't sit here. We could, we could go on about Shadowversity forever. Um, he, Shadowversity is, uh, wrong about Elden Ring. And the reason why he's wrong about Elden Ring is because he fundamentally misunderstands how FromSoft tells stories and what FromSoft's sort of signature style is. On top of that, he uh, seems incapable of acknowledging that his own experience with Elden Ring is proof that Elden Ring's model works. That his, his that his experience with Elden Ring, his curiosity carried him forward. And even though he encountered a hump, he overcame that hump by indulging in his curiosity, which is what 
all of the FromSoft games want you to do. They are all trying to teach you to indulge in curiosity. FromSoft's games are amazingly lifelike in that the way that they present their story is a lot how we encounter stories in the real world. Uh, not like how we pick up a book and read a story directly delivered to us in order of page one to page 300, uh, but rather how things are uncovered in the real world. You walk out of your room, you see an object on the ground that you don't remember being there. You go, how did this object get here? You can't, you look around and you can't find necessarily immediately a clue to why that object is there. So perhaps you pick up the object and that's that. You return it to its place and you call it good. Or you pick up the object and you go downstairs and you ask someone, hey, how did this object get here? And then someone in your house says, oh, I don't know. Maybe we should ask another person. And you go and ask another one of your roommates and they go, oh, I'm so sorry. I thought that I moved that object somewhere else. I must have dropped it. And then you go, oh, I'm sorry that you dropped it. And they go, yeah, I was running really quickly. And you go, why were you running so quickly? And then they go, oh, well, uh, while you were doing something else in the other room, a bird came into the house and I was trying to make sure that I opened the window so that the bird could fly out because it came in the chimney. And there you have it. You've discovered the story as a process of curiosity, of observing something, looking for context, and seeking out answers. Um, anyway, Elden Ring is good, and uh, Shadowversity is definitely wrong about Elden Ring, and it's sad that he's, like, mad coping uh, in the comment uh, from a really, really, really well-structured and extremely kind video that was done in, uh, in counter of his. If you enjoyed this protracted Elden Ring and FromSoft lore section and you'd like to see more of it, please make sure that you press subscribe and like down below. Uh, I would love to have more people hang out while I talk about video games, writing, lore, and all that cool stuff.